Hey guys, I'm Adam, and this is the first video on my new channel. I mean, it's an old channel, but like, new videos now. Um, I thought I'd focus on like music stuff, because all I do is music every day, and I work with dozens of artists and loads of writers, so I have experience in stuff that I wish I'd known when I started this journey. So, I want to cover things that maybe would be useful for beginner producers, but also singers and songwriters who want to improve their production skills so that they can record their own songs, or so they can make money from production, or whatever. Also, I want to do some guitar-based videos, and Mac-based videos, and Logic, and da 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 If you want to see anything in particular, just put it down in the comment bit down below, and I'll make sure to do a video on that. But today, I want to talk about my top five and a half favorite applications for Mac specifically to creatives. I've put musicians, but like creatives generally would really benefit from these apps. The half one we're gonna start with is either Google Drive or Dropbox. Now, you've definitely heard of Dropbox. I'm almost 100% sure. You might have heard of Google Drive as well. It's exactly the same thing. Um, if you've used it in the past, you might have used it in the browser on you know, in Safari, in Google Chrome, where you drag stuff onto there and upload it. What you can actually do is install it into your uh, desktop, so you've got an app and a folder in Finder, where you can just drop files, they'll syn synchronize across all platforms. Uh, my band, The Kind, me and Jane, actually, we have a shared Google Drive folder, so we can upload all our music there, and we can upload pictures there, and then we both have them all the time, so it's like a collaborative space, um, opposed to like having to send stuff back and forth all the time. It's really great, it's super cheap as well, to, for like a terabyte of storage, I think it's about a pound 50 on Google, not sure about Dropbox. So really go and check out Google Drive, Dropbox, whatever works for you, um, especially for collaboration, it's really useful. Number five, the actual number five on this list is gonna be an app called Flux. Flux is a really clever, really simple app that makes it easier to work late. So I think one thing that most creators share is when they get on like a path of like, I wanna do this piece of work, you just carry on even when like the sun's gone down and it's like midnight, you're still working. So all the screens we're looking at all day emit a lot of blue light. And blue light basically tells your brain that it's daytime, stay awake, stay alert, which is kind of a good thing, but obviously when you go straight from blue light to then trying to get to bed, <laughs> when you go from blue light to then trying to go to bed, your brain takes a lot, of a lot more time to like switch off and get ready for bed. So what Flux does is depending on what time the sun sets, it gradually changes the color of your screen to more yellow tones, removes the blue and replaces it with yellow. You can also adjust the contrast so it's not quite as yellow. So I think I've got mine set slightly differently because I didn't like it so orange, but it really does help with going to bed straight after doing work or like trying to switch off at the end of the day. So I'd really recommend Flux. And the best bit is it's free, absolutely free. Just install it, goes in the toolbar at the top and uh, you're away, really. The number four app on my list is an app called Magnet. Now I think Magnet's free, it might be a pound 50 or something, but I think it's free. And essentially it just gives you the same functionality as Windows users get, where you can snap windows on your desktop to any size. So if you want it full screen, you just drag it to the top, full screen. If you want it to be a third of the screen, drag it to the bottom right, third qu or quarters, and then you can do thirds and you can also do halves, just dragging it to the sides. Um, I mean, you'll see it on screen now, I'll, do, I'll demo it for you. It is one of my most used like shortcuts, I guess, every day I use it on my computer to like maybe have browser on the left, logic on the right, or to have like YouTube on the left and notes on the right, or to have zoom in the top right and then like YouTube in the top left or whatever you want to do. Like it's so, so usable, really quick to learn. Um, it's also got like a toolbar if you want to really be specific, you can click up there and then like organize stuff really specifically, but I just drag left, right um, and to the top to full screen thing most of the time. Honestly, as soon as you get used to doing it, you won't be able to live without it. I, I, it's one of the first things I install on my computer when I get a new laptop. So go and check out Magnet. I promise it will really, really speed up your arrangement of Windows. Number three on my list is an app called Right Click to MP3, I think, or Right Click MP3. I think it's on the App Store. If not, you can just Google it, Right Click MP3, it'll come up. It is paid, I think it's a pound. Um, essentially, whenever you've got a WAV file, or like, in fact, most audio files, A files, whatever, you can right click and then down in the services column, it will say change to MP3, you click that and it'll automatically convert the file to an MP3 file for you. So though it's not like packed with features, it does a really simple job and you can also batch convert. So if you right click, if you click and then select a bunch of stuff, right click MP3, it'll do them all for you one by one. It's obviously, you can do this online or you can do it in Logic or whatever, you can bounce out an MP3, but it's just way quicker if you just have a WAV or someone sends 
sends you a WAV and you want to quickly drag it across, you can just right click and convert it to MP3. So we've got two apps left and these two are kind of hard to separate from like first position and second position because they're both, one of them you'll already know about but you won't know about the app and the second one is just so useful. So the app that I think you probably know exists in the number two position but you didn't know you could download it is WeTransfer. So I think WeTransfer is the most used way to move like a big file to another place, be it a project or like a WAV file or like loads of pictures. Usually you just go on the website, wetransfer.com, drag in your files, and then send them, right? You can also send them as a link instead of as an email. Maybe you didn't know that, really useful. Way better than all of that. If you download WeTransfer to your Mac, you get a little button up in the toolbar and you can just drag any file from Finder to the button, it'll upload and then give you a link and you can copy it straight into an email or a message or whatever. It's as fast as using the browser version, except it's just in your desktop. There's no need to go to Safari to like find the website and then drag it and leave the browser open. Da, da, da. It's just a little app. It'll do it in the background. You get a little spinny wheel to show you the progress of it. Super recommend. It's free. Honestly, the WeTransfer like little applet is so useful. I use it probably 10 times a day to send stuff back and forth. So make sure you go and install it because I guarantee if you use WeTransfer, you will love this app and you will use it all the time. And it's native. It's not like a third party thing. WeTransfer make it. I don't know why they don't advertise it enough. The number one, the best, I think most useful app or the app that I wish I'd known about years ago, um, the save your ass app, the best six pounds I spend a month is Backblaze. Backblaze is the best backup solution for I think it's on Windows, but definitely for Mac and for creatives, I believe. So Backblaze for about six pounds, seven pounds a month gives you unlimited storage. It will back up your hard drives, your computer, anything you plug into your computer, all for that one like six, seven quid price. It'll do it all in the background so you don't have to like monitor it and it backs up continuously and saves things for 30 days. So let's say you have your hard drive backed up and then you go away for 20 days and you lose the hard drive. When you come back, Backblaze will still have had that file saved for you. The original backup will take probably between like two to five days depending on how much stuff you have on your computer i have like six or seven terabytes to back up but once it's up there then it just does like what you're missing so if you add some files move some stuff around it'll back those up instead of backing up the whole system again super useful and let's say you do want to download the files you can either download them from their server which would probably take some time or you can pay them to post you hard drives with your stuff on and you can either post them the hard drives back and have a partial refund or you can keep the hard drives as like a physical backup at home um, the best thing about Backblaze is it's completely autonomous. You don't need to monitor it. I never think about it, but I know that if my house burns down in a fire and I lose everything, Backblaze has every project I've ever made. It has every photo I've ever taken, all stored for six quid a month. So I think Backblaze is the solution to having an offsite backup. Instead of paying hundreds of pounds for terabytes of storage every month, you just need one subscription. So yeah, so we had number five and a half, Google Drive and Dropbox. Great for sharing stuff, great for saving stuff in the cloud. We had number five, Flux, which is good for uh, changing the colors on your desktop to make it less obtrusive at night. Then we had number four, which was Magnet. This is the one that lets you like drag stuff to the sides of the screen and like organize your desktop better. Uh, then we had number three, which was right click to MP3. It's great for converting WAVs or A files into easy to use MP3 files that aren't so huge. Uh, number two was the WeTransfer applet, which goes up in the toolbar. Really useful, use it every day. And number one was Backblaze. Uh, most of these are free. If they're not free, they're very cheap. You will use them, I'm gonna say every single day if if you do decide to go and check them out um, and they've made my life a lot easier. Uh, thanks so much for watching this video anyway and uh, there's going to be loads loads more content coming out actually very soon so I have loads of videos planned um, a lot on production someone recording vocals and other really specific stuff and more general things as well so make sure you hit the subscribe button down there and the little bell uh, and you'll be notified as all my videos come out and as I said if there's any videos that you'd like to see if there's any questions you have about production or about Macs or about whatever put it down in the comments below and also if I missed any apps that you use every day make sure you put them down in the comments below i'll check them out uh, and maybe i'll add them in the description uh, all the apps are going to be linked in the description if you need to find them and hopefully i'll see you in my next video cheers